So speaking of mistakes that were made, what happened with Eagle Claw that where things did not go according to plan? Probably the biggest thing, and, and I think we've since solved it, but we shouldn't be too cocky. Uh, the biggest thing was, was command and control and, uh, and planning. So you had different units, uh, disparate units. I mean, the Air Force had their own special ops guys. The Army had their special ops guys, um, as did the Navy. So as, as you're looking at that, we, uh, so we had the Rangers, Army guys, uh, the best aircraft that were out there at the time, because we're just starting to incorporate the UH-60 into the Army. You know, the, the, but we're still flying skid-mounted Huey helicopters from Vietnam era, right? Some of them actually still had holes in them that were uh, just had 100 mile an hour tape over them. So uh, depending on the unit, <laughs> crazy, isn't it? <laughs> so, they had, uh, so you got these Air Force helicopters, which were the best in the world at the time. They had advanced avionics on them. They were armored up. They, they were actually the same birds that went into the Sante raid uh, mm. in Vietnam and uh, the, the uh, MH-53s. Had a big old 50 cal on a back ramp. So, uh, so we're like, we like that one. So the Air Force guys got the nod, and uh, again, they got the advanced avionics. So, but then we had to, as Rangers, Army guys, we had to learn, you know, what are the freaks, what are your call signs, what are your standard operating procedures for getting me, an Army guy, on and off your airplane. And uh, so once we worked through that, you know, there were, some, there were some tactics, techniques, and procedures, and standard operating procedures that we had to go through. And uh, so we're good, right? But then as the plan morphs, they're looking at it, and they say, you know, in order to get close, we've got to be able to take off from an aircraft carrier deck. And right then they're like, whoa, 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 you, you Air Force guys, you're not qualified to do carrier deck landings. You know, that thing's moving. And mm -hmm. uh, so we got to bring in the Marines. Now the Marines also had 53s. Um, they weren't as heavily armored, so you could get more guys on it, which is a plus, uh, but they didn't have the advanced avionics that, uh, that the, 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 spec, the Air Force spec op guys had. But now you're also putting two units together. And again, so there's the whole standard operating procedures, the frequencies, the call signs, the radios. You know, the Army had their own radios. The Air Force had their own radios. And the, the, the Marines had their own radios. And so how are we going to get all this stuff to talk? And so as they're working through all of that kind of stuff, the, uh, you know, the clock is ticking. And we got we to do something. The, uh, the whole command and control piece as well. You know, we hadn't done a combined mission like that of that magnitude where we would have to assemble, force project, and then, uh, and then execute, and then get out of there uh, before the reinforcements show up. We hadn't done that since probably Vietnam, you know, some, what, seven years earlier? So all that stuff had atrophied. Uh, so that was the biggest thing. I think, um, uh, it, 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 so quite frankly, intelligence was another gap. Mm. We had uh, we had lost a lot of when when the embassy closed down. You know, we lost a lot of our human uh, sources. We had guys on the ground that were giving us great intelligence. I mean, we would get actual pictures of the lock we would have to cut. Uh, we were actually getting pictures of the guy we would have to shoot. The radios that they were carrying. Those. How are they sending it out? Um, you know, I would get it in a black and white photo. So. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I don't know how I got it, but it's here. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. The, uh, you know, so the, we, we had, we had decent imagery. Uh, we had uh, pretty, pretty good human. And, uh, and again, it was probably parts of our, you know, that network of, of spies and informants that had stayed behind, you know, stayed behind. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was still there. Uh, I know they had sent some of our classified units in there to, to, to gather more, uh, more information and intelligence. So, but one of the things that we didn't have, and, and I think as Americans, we're, we're, we're prone to dismiss, is the desert. And we keep making the same mistake over and over. And I've, I've, made it my, I've made that mistake myself since, is that we look at a big ass expanse of desert and we think nobody lives there. Mm -hmm. in, actu in actuality, a lot of people live there. You know, the, there's nomads that cross it constantly. I mean, if, you're, if, you, if your country is mostly desert, you're going to live in it. And uh, so as we picked the desert one, airstrip and we did not expect traffic at that time in the morning on that road in the desert and uh and lo and behold there's traffic you know big old um, tanker rolls through you know petrol tanker rolls through they fail to stop so the rangers uh the security element pops a law into their cab and stops the truck uh, there's a bus that rolls through uh, with about 48 49 people on it and uh, so we pulled them. They did stop. We pull them off to the side. We pan them up. So now you got POWs, mm -hmm. and, uh, and they're not even combatants. You know, they're just regular. They were just on the bus trying to get somewhere. So, so you got that going on. So there were so there were some intelligence gaps. That, hey, we did not expect people. So now the mission's already blown at that point. You know, it's it's not blown, but at least compromised. Mm -hmm. The uh, 
and then the weather is another thing. They got these things called haboobs. And haboobs is a big old dust storm. Yeah, I like that pictures when you sent me your article. I was like, that is terrifying looking. Oh, it's crazy. And they just roll in from nowhere. And so all of a sudden you got these these aircraft that take off and they're moving in and they're stuck in a haboob. And again, you got this disparity between the navigational uh, equipment on the two. So they're trying to stay together. They get separated. Uh, they finally start piecemealing into, they all make it to the, um, you know, to the Desert One landing strip. And, uh, but one of them shuts down and they can't get it cranked back up. You know, they got, got the old blue light, the red light that's blinking. And it's like, I don't know, do we want to try it? Um, and again, two different, uh, you know, maybe the Air Force guys would have said yes, or the Marine guys would have said yes. But uh, maybe, they try turning it off and then turning it back on. Yeah, because I mean, and, and again, it's the, the dust, the sand, the, uh, it's just, it's killing these engine parts. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, because again, the, the filters, we know so much more now about flying in brownout and flying in dust and, and uh, you know, how those machines operate. At that time, not so much. Mm -hmm. So now we, uh, we have a conundrum in that uh, we don't have enough lift, you know, with one bird down, we don't have enough lift to, uh, to get all the assault force up into the mountains for a rent, remain overnight and then go in and take the, uh, the you know, execute the mission in the next period of darkness. Mm. Uh, so we didn't have enough time to obviously clean up that site, get all the guys on the birds enough lift to get in. So, uh, so they called the mission. Uh, one of the other uh, problems was not all the, the aircraft had uh, in-flight refuel booms. That's why we had to land there in the desert in order mm -hmm. to refuel. In order to refuel, you had to fly the helicopter up to the nose of the, the big old C-130 tanker yeah. that uh, was just full of gas mm -hmm. and uh, in brownout conditions. And, uh, and then a guy comes out with a, with a, a you know, <laughs> literally a freaking hose and hooks it up and, and fills it, tops you off. So as as they're trying to do that, and again, the mission's already blown. It's already, uh, it's already been canceled. So they're just trying to fuel up so they can get everybody out of there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, the nearest they can figure is that the, uh, you always have a ground guide, you know, whenever planes and vehicles are moving. And so this young kid is doing this, and he's, he's bringing the, the helicopter in close enough to get the hose out to him. And uh, the prop wash on those 53s, you know, blows him back a little bit. And so as he's going like this, Mm -hmm. the, uh, the bird gets too close to the C-130, clips it, um, hits, hits one of the oxygen tanks, I think, in the front uh, wheel well, and boom, the thing goes up, and then eight servicemen die. And uh, so big, uh, big kick in the jimmies, the, you know, the loss of life, but then also the, the ability that, uh, hey, America can't launch a raid like this yeah. and uh, so that's what admiral holloway got to the bottom of uh and his you know it was admiral holloway i mean i think he was a chief of naval operations retired and mm -hmm. uh he he was actually given the nod to uh figure out hey why did, why did we screw this up why did this thing fail because yeah, literally I, I think in in each and every piece like the marine pilots were the best in the marine corps you know, mm -hmm. the, the Air Force guys were the best pilots and the best birds that we could bring to bear. The Rangers were the best uh, infantry. I mean, so everybody was, was the best in the world at what they did, but there was an inability to, uh, to at the margins, to, to kind of figure it out, do the command and control, communicate exactly and synchronize it. Mm -hmm. So Holloway rolls in and he looks, at, uh, he looks at the whole thing, breaks it down and says, you know, we, have, we need to have some type of central authority that does man, train, equip. And, and synchronizes across the different forces. Because yeah, they, they need radios that need to talk. They need to have common tactics, techniques, and procedures. Yeah, we, we need, uh, we need a, a, a command or an, a, an entity to be able to do that. We're, we're not doing it. And, uh, and they sit on it. Scratching. Exactly. For, uh, no, yep, it's yep. dog scratching. Oh yeah, yeah. I got two. Uh, I got two of them sitting right here. Come here, buddy. <laughs> I can hear them. Everybody, everybody likes to see the corgi. Hey, buddy. Hi, hi, Simba.